for watching the news on Bahrain International. Mohammed Shaban, good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of Somalia, Mohammed Abdullahi Farmajo, on his country's Independence Day. His Majesty the King wished President Farmajo good health and happiness on the occasion. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fawzia bint Abdullah Zainal, on the International Day of Parliamentarism. She lauded the achievements attained by the Kingdom under His Majesty the King's leadership, citing the constant royal support for the legislative branch since the launch of the Comprehensive Sustainable Development and Reform March in Bahrain. She added that His Majesty the King's support for the legislator has brought about a quantum leap in the Kingdom's democratic process, which adopted the principles that consolidate the state of law and institutions that are built on civilizational and modern constitutional bases. She asserted that the constitutional amendments emanating from the National Action Charter had inaugurated a new era of political and democratic reforms within the modern constitutional monarchy based on the rule of law, justice and transparency. She prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty the King with abundant health and happiness and the Kingdom with further progress and prosperity. His Majesty the King sent a reply cable of thanks to the Speaker in which he lauded the Kingdom's success in attaining distinguished qualitative achievements in the parliamentary field as part of the legislative branch's keenness to assume its constitutional duties and carry out its constructive role in serving the nation. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the performance of the Council of Representatives, noting that its cooperation with the government has contributed to enhancing the development march in the Kingdom. His Majesty stressed that Bahrain will continue its civilizational approach based on moderation, openness and respect for all religions and cultures. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh on the occasion of the International Day of Parliamentarism. Al Saleh expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty's continuous support of the Shura Council for the benefit of the people of Bahrain to continue the march of development during His Majesty's prosperous era. He affirmed that this occasion is an international recognition of the pivotal role of Parliament as one of the most important pillars of democracy, stressing the keenness to continue to develop appropriate policies and legislation to achieve development and establish stability and prosperity in Bahrain, as well as promote the principle of mutual coexistence and meet the aspirations of the people of Bahrain. In reply, His Majesty the King sent a cable of thanks to the Shura Council Chairman and hailed the pioneering role of Bahrain in the field of legislative and supervisory work that enhances the effective parliamentary contribution and comprehensive development and the development of laws and legislation. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the constructive performance of the Shura Council within the framework of continuing cooperation with the executive authority to make more achievements. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order No. 25 of 2020 appointing Sheikh Adaij bin Salman bin Ahmed Al Khalifa as Vice Chairman of the Spring Council for Youth and Sports. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 42 of 2020 appointing Sami Abdullah Ahmed Buhaza as Under Secretary for Land Transportation and Posts at the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications. Under the same decree, current Assistant Under Secretary for Air Transportation and Aviation Safety and Security, Hussein Ahmed Rashid, takes over as Assistant Under Secretary for Air Navigation and Meteorological Services. Ibtisam Muhammad Khalifa Shamlan has also been appointed as Assistant Under Secretary for Air Transportation and Aviation Safety and Security at the same ministry. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 43 of 2020, transferring Assistant Under Secretary for Technical Services at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Ibrahim Hassan Ali Al Hawaj, to serve as Assistant Under Secretary for Sanitary Drainage. Current Capital Municipality Director General Shawqiya Ibrahim Hamid Ahmedan has been transferred to the Ministry to serve as Assistant Under Secretary for Joint Municipal Services. Current Assistant Under Secretary for Resources and Information, Mohammed Saad Mohammed Al Sihli, has been transferred to serve as Capital Municipality. Director General. Under the same decree, Kadam Ali Abdul Latif Ali and Mohammed Adil Mohammed Bouhassan have been appointed respectively as Assistant Under Secretaries for Technical Services and Assistant Under Secretary for Resources and Information. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held remotely in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. After the session, Cabinet Secretary General Dr. Yasser bin Isa Nasser issued the following statement. 
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister congratulated students on their outstanding and honorable results despite the exceptional circumstances and challenges resulting from COVID-19 and thanked parents and caretakers, the Ministry of Education, academic and administrative bodies for their efforts in making the school year a success. His Royal Highness hailed the achievements made in the housing field and thanked services ministers for their field visits to villages and towns to inspect the needs of citizens, including the visit of the Minister of Housing to a Salhiya village, where he presented a proposal for a housing project to serve its people that included proposed locations and the necessary financial flow. His Royal Highness appointed the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects to study the proposal. The Prime Minister directed the Ministry of Forks, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning to reschedule the financial dues of the Ministry for some butchers in the Manama Central Market and the Jidhafs Market. His Royal Highness also directed the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments to cooperate with the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities to preserve historical mosques in the kingdom, including the Ahmed al-Fatih Mosque. The cabinet condemned the terrorist Houthi militia's targeting of civilians and civilian targets with ballistic missiles and its attempts to carry out drone attacks on a number of cities in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It hailed the success and efficiency of the Saudi Air Defense Forces in foiling these attacks and affirmed that targeting civilian objects and civilians is a cowardly attack and a heinous crime for its flagrant violations of the rules of international law. The meeting welcomed the decisions of the Arab League at the ministerial level as it constituted a reinforcement of efforts and initiatives to resolve the Libyan crisis by peaceful means and warning against the consequences of continuing military action as well as supporting the positions of Egypt and Sudan for the Renaissance Dam crisis. The cabinet also condemned the Iranian and Turkish military interference in northern Iraq as it represents a violation of the sovereignty of a brotherly Arab country, interfering in its internal affairs and threatening its security and stability in the region. An implementation of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa to unify national efforts to face the repercussions of COVID-19 on the local level and following the decisions of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa, the government decided after a meeting with the Legislative Authority and the BCCI to pay 50% of Bahraini salaries that are insured in the private sector for a period of three months starting July. The cabinet approved Bahrain joining the agreement on conservation of migratory pieces, species rather of fungal animals issued by the United Nations Environmental Program. The cabinet approved a list to honor sports delegations that participated in a number of international events. The cabinet also approved canceling the VTMS service fee for vessels in accordance with the ministerial decision 15 of 2017. The cabinet approved charging anti-dumping fees against tiles, porcelain and stoves imported from China and India and requested the Ministry of Finance and National Economy as well as Customs Affairs to follow up in this regard. The cabinet referred to the Representatives Council a memo regarding amending topic 35 of draft law 36 of 2012. The cabinet approved appointing a number of imams across a number of mosques. The cabinet approved a plan of the Ministry of Health to update surgery hospital systems and provide it with staff and equipment. The cabinet then approved a proposal regarding housing units for Bahraini academics and media figures who provided remarkable services for the kingdom. The cabinet was briefed by the Minister of Education regarding the academic school results and discussed the report of the UNESCO on the positive image Bahrain has created in the field of education. The cabinet also was briefed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs regarding the extraordinary meeting of the Arab League on the situation in Libya, in addition to the outcomes of the extraordinary meeting of the UN on the ministerial level regarding the relief and employment of Palestinian refugees. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of Somalia, Mohammed Abdullahi Farmajo, on his country's Independence Day. His Royal Highness the Premier also sent a cable of good wishes on the occasion to Somalia's Prime Minister Hassan Ali Khairi. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Council of Representative Speaker Fawzia bint Abdullah Zainal on the International Day of Parliamentarism. The Speaker stressed that Bahrain's achievements in light of the comprehensive and sustainable development led by His Majesty the King and the government's continuous support to the Parliament are the best evidence of His Royal Highness's keenness on Bahrain being a successful model among developed countries with its important development projects. She emphasized the Parliament's keenness to boost cooperation with the Executive Branch for the sake of Bahrain's development and progress. In his reply, His Royal Highness the Premier thanked the Speaker and the members of the Consultative Council for their noble and patriotic sentiments and wished them success in serving Bahrain's development. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister praised the success achieved by the Council of Representatives and stressed continued support for cooperation between the executive and legislative branches. His Royal Highness reiterated his support to the Parliament in order to achieve its noble mission, contributions to the advancement of the Kingdom and citizens. 
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a cable from the Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh, where he congratulated His Royal Highness on the occasion of the anniversary of the International Day of Parliamentarism. Al Saleh expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness for the prosperous cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities in all fields. He praised the achievements of the government, which reflect His Royal Highness's keenness to achieve the goals of the reform project of His Majesty the King. In response, His Royal Highness sent a cable to Al Saleh, where he expressed thanks and appreciation for his noble feelings, praising the achievements of the Sure Council. He affirmed the continuation of cooperation between the two authorities in order to serve the country and its people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of Somalia, Mohammed Abdullahi Farmajo, on his country's Independence Day. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also sent a cable of good wishes to, on the occasion to the Somali Prime Minister Hassan Ali Khairi. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Speaker Fawziya bint Abdullah Zainal on the International Day of Parliamentarism. Zainal stressed that Bahrain's achievements in light of the comprehensive and sustainable development led by His Majesty the King and the government's continuous support to the Parliament are the best evidence of His Royal Highness's keenness on Bahrain being a successful model among developed countries with its important development projects. She emphasized the Parliament's keenness to boost cooperation with the executive branch for the sake of Bahrain's development and progress. In his reply, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince expressed thanks and appreciation to the Speaker and members of the Council of Representatives for their fruitful cooperation with the Executive Branch, which was clearly reflected in the progress of the development process in Bahrain through the steady implementation of all initiatives, plans and projects in order to serve all sectors and contribute to accomplish further national achievements. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations of Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh on the occasion of the International Day of Parliamentarism. Al Saleh expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness's continuous support of the Shura Council, which was led by the Council to make numerous achievements, which reflects the goals of the Comprehensive Development March led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He stressed the keenness to continue to develop appropriate policies and legislation to achieve development and establish stability and prosperity in Bahrain. In reply, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince sent a cable of thanks to the Shura Council Chairman, where he expressed thanks and appreciation to the Chairman and members of the Council for their work with the Executive Authority that contributed to laying the foundations for development in the Kingdom and continuing the march of the achievements in various sectors to benefit the country and citizens. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict No. 12 of 2020, stipulating the following appointments at the Ministry of Forks, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning. Maha Khalifa Ahmed Hamada as Road Planning and Designing Director. Fathi Abdullah Ismail as Sanitary Drainage Planning and Projects Director. Khawla Khalid Mohammed Hayat, Coast Engineering Director. Yusuf Osama Ibrahim Buhiji as Projects Director. Mahmoud Abdul Hamid as Shaybani, a Planning and Municipal Council's Affairs Director. Yusuf Ahmed Yusuf, Animal Control Director, Khalid Abdullah Shirawi, Maritime Control Director, Fajr Sabah Hassalum, Animal Health Director. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also issued Edict Number 13 of 2020, appointing Maysoon Mohammed Ali Sabkar as Director of Communication and Marketing at the Ministry of Telecommunication and Transportation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict No. 16 of 2020, appointing Sheikh Ali bin Salman bin Ali Al Khalifa as Director of the Future Generation Reserve Fund at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also issued Edict No. 17 of 2020, appointing Mohammed Mahmoud Sarif as the Director of Public and International Relations at the Electricity and Water Authority. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also issued Edict No. 18 of 2020, appointing Adnan Saeed Mohammed as Director of of Production Development at the National Oil and Gas Authority. His Royal Highness also issued Edict No. 19 of 2020, appointing Yusuf Ahmed Isa Dekhil as the Director of Program Development at the Labor Market Regulatory Authority. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Vice Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Sheikh Adaiz bin Salman bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, in the presence of the SCYS Secretary General, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser congratulated Sheikh Adaiz on His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's trust by appointing him Vice Chairman of the SCYS, noting the administrative and technical expertise of Sheikh Adaiz, which will contribute to developing youth and sports 
Sports work in the kingdom, in addition to implementing the plans and strategies of the council. Izana stated that the appointment of Sheikh Daej will constitute a new addition to the work of the council in the coming period and will have a positive outcome on the youth and sports sector, in addition to providing more pioneering initiatives to make Bahrain the youth and sports capital. For his part, Sheikh Daej expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his appointment, affirming his keenness to dedicate his administrative and technical expertise to support and the plans and strategies implemented by his Highness Sheikh Nasser for the youth and sports sector in the kingdom. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Under Secretary of the Prime Minister's Court, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. His Highness wished Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid success in assuming his new responsibilities and praised his expertise. His Highness then discussed with Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid ways to enhance the youth and sports sector to achieve the aspired goals. The Speaker of Representative Council Fawzia Zainal expressed thanks and appreciation to the government following the Cabinet's decision to launch a new economic stimulus package that aims to achieve stability for citizens and enhance the local economy as well as enhance the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities. She held the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister as well as the efforts of Team Bahrain led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in facing the pandemic. She affirmed the Council's keenness to provide support for all decisions and measures that aim to overcome this crisis. The Shirt Council valued the care and keenness of His Majesty the King towards the citizens, especially during the current circumstances the Kingdom is facing. They praise the keenness of His Majesty to achieve the aspirations of the people and provide them with unlimited support in order to achieve family stability. The Council also praised the role of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister in implementing programs and initiatives to support citizens and private sector institutions in order to maintain sustainability and development. Arab Social Affairs Ministers held a remote meeting in which they praised the measures and initiatives taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain in facing COVID-19 in the medical, economic and social fields, which alleviated the impacts of the pandemic on the society, especially for people receiving social support. The meeting aims to unify efforts to contain the virus and discuss precautionary measures taken by the countries. The Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil Hamedan, highlighted the steps taken by the Kingdom in combating the virus, in addition to a number of plans adopted by the government to ensure the health and safety of people. The Minister of Housing, Engineer Bassem Al Hamar, announced the partial completion of the Bahir housing project, reaching 40% of completion. He said that this project follows the royal order to build 40,000 units and added that this project is scheduled to finish by December. The minister added that the project will include a number of services such as shops, mosques, and parks. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 5,105 active cases with 736 recoveries, 438 registered new cases and 5 new deaths. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap and water on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. This while covering the nose and mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible. The UAE Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Hanyan, reviewed with the U.S. Special Representative for Iran, Brian Hook, the latest developments in the region and the threats posed by Iran. The two sides affirmed keenness to continue joint efforts to enhance stability in the region and a commitment to eliminate extremism in all its forms. The talks also touched on the strategic cooperation between the UAE and the U.S. in all fields and ways to further improve it. Dozens of Houthi coup militias were killed by the Yemeni army fire during repelling two infiltration attempts in the south of the coastal city of Al Hudaydah in western Yemen. A military source said that the army foiled an infiltration attempt by elements of the Iran backed militia in the Beit al Faqih Directorate, and the operation led to the killing of a number of coupists. Dozens of Houthi militia members were killed in an ambush set by the legitimate forces of a group that tried to infiltrate the army's positions in mountainous fronts. A spokesman for the Palestinian presidency, Nabil Abu Rudayna, confirmed that the Palestinian position rejects the Israeli annexation plans, whether the annexation plans are complete or partial. He stressed the adherence to the two-state solution to end the occupation and establish an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital on the 1967 borders in accordance with international legitimacy resolutions and the Arab Peace Initiative. The Palestinian official also renewed the assertion that if the Israeli authorities make an annexation, it must assume full responsibility as an occupying power. 
And now we hand you over to Barat for the latest business news. Thank you, Mohammed. Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Barah Amdallah and going to the local stocks as Bahrain O share index has closed at 1,277.71 points, marking an increase of 0.51 points above the previous closing. Results indicated that 49 equity transactions took place with a volume of 2,938,254 worth 275,354 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the investment sector representing 52.38% of the total value of securities traded. Emirates has announced that it will restart passenger flights to Egypt, Tunisia, Scotland and the Maldives. Emirates will resume its flights to Cairo and Tunisia from July 1st, Glasgow from July 15th and Mali from July 16th. Dubai said it would reopen its business and lead your visitors for July 7th with new air travel protocols that facilitate travel for UAE citizens, residents and tourists while safeguarding the health and safety of visitors and communities. The chief executive of Airbus said that plane output will be 40% lower for two years compared to pre-crisis plans. It's underscoring the threat to jobs as it draws up rapid restructuring plans due to travel slump. On June 3rd, Airbus was looking to hold underlying jet output at 40% below pre-coronavirus pandemic plans for two years as a basis for the restructuring. European Union and UK negotiators resumed face-to-face -face talks on the post-Brexit trade deal, with both sides insisting the process must accelerate markedly if they're to reach an agreement with the end of the year. The parties disagree notably on regulations for businesses and for the fishing industry, with the UK firmly opposed to EU demands for the long-term access to British waters. Nissan Chief Executive Makoto Uchida told shareholders today he is giving up half his pay after the Japanese automaker sank into the red amid plunging sales and planned closures in Spain and Indonesia. Uchida apologized for the poor results and promised a recovery by 2023, driven by cost cuts and new models showcasing electric car and automated driving technology. And that's all for the business news for this evening. It's back to you, Mohammed. Thank you, Parah. A Russian company in the city of Perm has designed a mobile disinfectant machine, which it claims may help stop the spread of COVID-19. The machine is being trailed at a local hospital to disinfect staff wearing hazmat suits. When a person passes through the frame, a motion sensor is triggered. It sends a signal to the pump, and a person is sprayed with a fine mist that, according to the manufacturer, can contain disinfectant to kill the virus. None, no disinfectant is being used here. It is dangerous to spray people directly with concentrations of chemicals like chlorine and bleach. Water only is being used to demonstrate how the pump works. So far, this machine has only been used in one hospital and cannot be used unless staff are wearing full PPEs.